الحمد لله الحمد لله خالق الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم ومخرج الصبر من الألم وملق التوبة على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي على رسوله الأكرم ذي الشرف الأشم والنور الأتم والكتاب المحكم وكمال النبيين والخاتم سيد ولد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين كان يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فصلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين فالحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا والحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا والحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإن طائفتان من المؤمنين اقتتلوا فأصلحوا بينهما فإن بغت إحداهما على الأخرى فقاتلوا التي تبغي حتى تفيء إلى أمر الله فإن فاءت فأصلحوا بينهما بالعدل وأقسطوا إن الله يحب المقسطين اللهم اجعلنا من المقسطين رب شحل صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي واللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله واللهم اجعلنا من الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر أمين يا رب العالمين Today's khutbah was very difficult for me to pick. There are lots of, I usually make a list of khutbahs a, about a year in advance about things that I'd like to be able to talk about, ayat that I'd like to be able to talk about in a khutbah. And when I revisit that list, sometimes I feel maybe if I talk about this ayah, it might be too depressing for people. <laughs> or they might get, you know, a bit too, they, they might walk away with too many negative feelings. But then I revisit that thought, and I say, Allah Azza wa everything He revealed to us in His book is relevant and important, important guidance. And one of the purposes of revelation is to remove al-huzn, to get rid of sadness, to get rid of fear, to get rid of depression from our lives. And sometimes the subject itself is negative, just like, you know, medicine doesn't taste good. But the purpose of it is to get sickness away, to, get, to remove sickness. So even though the subject matter itself is difficult, and I'll share with you in a moment what it is, the subject matter may, itself may be difficult and may even sound depressing, but you know what? It's a necessity. And it's something we have to absolutely talk about because it's a phenomenon now. It's something that we all face, it's something that we've all seen, and it's something that's demoralized so, many, so very many of us. And the subject is the one of when Muslims argue, and especially more than that, when they fight each other. The worst case scenario, when the Muslim is ready to kill the other Muslim. And it's not something unheard of. It's not something unheard of in history, and it's something we see tragically even today. The worst cases of that, of course, is when Muslims are ready to shed each other's blood. But even less than that, when Muslims are arguing with each other, fighting with each other, and even sometimes these things happen inside the walls of a masjid, the place where we come to find peace. You'll find Muslims fighting with each other sometimes. It happens. Or in business, Muslims get into arguments with each other. Or over ideological issues, they get into arguments with each other. Of course, the internet is a great place for that. So we can fight each other under, in the comment sections of YouTube videos, right? Or we can have entire debates and arguments and back and forth name calling, Muslims calling each other names and refuting each other. 
it's become part of our culture, unfortunately, something we've just come to accept as something that, should ha that just happens. What can you do? You can't avoid it. And I wanted to just highlight in this khutbah just, just one ayah. If I get to talk about one ayah and some of the things that are embedded, some of the wisdoms that are embedded in this beautiful ayah about Muslims when they fight with each other. And that's the ayah I recited to you in the beginning from Surah Al-Hujurat. Very powerful statement Allah Azza wa Jal mentions وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اِقْتَتَلُوا فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا I'll translate the ayah poorly first, a very shallow translation. And then I'll try to dive into some of the wording that Allah Himself uses in the ayah. The ayah basically, as paraphrasing the, the, the message of the ayah, talks about if it happens that there are two groups of believers that are, that are fighting each other, that are fighting amongst each other, then make peace between them. Aslihu baynahuma, reconcile, make peace between them. فَإِن بَغَدْ إِحْدَاهُمَا عَلَى الْأُخْرَى If one of them still goes after the other one, meaning peace was made and they still started fighting again, one of them picked the fight one more time. فَقَاتِلُوا الَّتِي تَبْغِي حَتَّى تَفِيئَ إِلَىٰ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ Then fight the one that started the fight again, start the one that revolted, until they come back to Allah's command, which means here, until they come back to peace. Or they come back to peace negotiations again. فَإِن فَاءَتْ And if they do come back, meaning come back to discuss and stop the fighting, فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا بِالْعَدْلِ وَأَقْسِطُوا Then make peace between them using justice, بِالْعَدْلِ وَأَقْسِطُوا And make sure that you're not unfair. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِطِينَ No doubt Allah loves the people who make sure that they're not being unfair. That's the rough meaning of the message of the ayah. But I wanted to highlight here how beautifully Allah talks about this subject. وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ As opposed to وَإِذَا When you say in the Arabic language, إِذَا There is an expectation that something is bound to happen. It's gonna happen. Allah Azza wa is telling us, that is not normal. Believers fighting each other is not normal. And you should never accept it. Never should Muslims relegate themselves to thinking, well, that's just how it is. Just because of that word in. We cannot accept it as a normal thing. We can't cave in. And then ta'ifatani. The, the nuhat, the grammarians, when they were trying to understand this ayah. You see, when you read the English translation, the translation just tells you the basic meaning of what's going on. But it doesn't dive into the language that Allah Azza wa Jal used. You know, bilisanin arabiyyin mubin. Hada kitabun musaddiqun lisanan arabiyyan. This book is very clear in its Arabic. It's very precise, pristine Arabic. And Allah talks about the Arabic being so awesome, so incredible in the Quran, that human beings can't compete. It has to be the word of Allah. It, it can't be the word of a human being. So every little word, every little detail counts. And so one of those details that just perplexed the grammarians was, it's actually when you say the word in, those of you that are a little bit familiar with Arabic, if you use the word in, the expected, يعني ما بعد ما يليها فعل لابد من أن يكون فعلا It absolutely has to be a verb what comes after it. But the thing after it is actually a noun. So there's, a, there's an idmar here, meaning they say there's a verb that's implied here or the sequence is reversed unusually, meaning it's a very unusual form of saying if two believing groups fight. Instead of putting the verb first, Allah said ta'ifatani, which is a noun, and then He mentioned the verb later, iqtatalu. Now, I know this is not a lesson in grammar, and most people here don't know Arabic grammar, and I know that. But I wanted to make this point for just one reason. And that one reason is Allah Azza wa Jal used highly strange, highly unusual structure to talk about believers fighting, because believers fighting itself is highly strange. It's highly unusual. It's not something that can even be talked about using normal sentence structure. That, you know, the strangeness of the language is to illustrate how strange and unusual and unnatural the circumstance itself is. This should not be taking place. in ta'ifatan. And then on top of that, subhanallah, ta'ifatan. On the one hand, Allah Azza wa is speaking. And He says, any two groups. This is nakira, it's not in it ta'ifatan, it's not alif lam on it, ta'ifatan, any two groups. Which actually means that you and I should not think, oh, when Allah is talking about believers shouldn't fight, He excludes that bunch. Those people, they're not really believers anyway. So when they cause a fight, or when we're fighting with them, that one's okay. Allah is not talking about those guys. Those guys are kuffar anyway, or we consider them kuffar anyway. 
We're pretty good at that. When we hate somebody, then they're out of Islam. You know, they must not be believers. Allah didn't do that. The nakira here suggests, the, the not putting the alif lam here suggests, this could happen to any two groups. And then he added, وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Which is remarkable to me. It's remarkable. Any two groups from among al-mu'mineen, true believers. Allah, you know, we, in the Quran we say, الَّذِينَ amanu, Those who believe. But الَّذِينَ amanu, that phrase in the Arabic language can mean people who have very strong faith. It could mean people that are weak in their faith. It could even include hypocrites. It could. But when Allah says al-mu'mineen, then He means the most sincere, the strongest, the most committed believers. These people are so, so praised in the Qur'an, al-mu'minun, that Allah describes them in this dunya with qad aflah al-mu'minun. True believers, al-mu'minun, have already attained success. We think of success when we go to Jannah. But Allah says the one who is al-mu'min, he doesn't even have to wait until Jannah, he's already attained success. Qad aflah al-mu'min, qad tahqiq You know? And the al al-madi. Not even the true believers will attain success. They already have. Subhanallah. <laughs> what amazing language. That's al-mu'minun. But now in this ayah, Allah is talking about Muslims who fight each other. So you would think, if a Muslim is ready to fight with another Muslim, they must not have real iman. These must be corrupt, bad people. These must be hypocrites or, you know, fasiq, corrupt, bad Muslims. Good Muslims would never fight each other. But Allah is saying to you and me, that when Muslims get into a fight with each other, the first thing you should not do is judge their iman. Don't say these people, don't, they don't have iman. They're not believers. They are mu'mineen still. As far as you're concerned, they still have iman. And this is absolutely essential. Because if our job, which is coming in the next part of the ayah, our job, the rest of us who are not in the fight, our job is to make peace. Our job, Allah made it our job, the rest of the Muslims to make peace. فَأَصْلِحُوا And I'll get to that in a second. But if our job is to make peace, and we don't think these people really have iman, if we've already judged their hearts, then we're not qualified to make peace. Because we already have ill feelings towards them in our hearts. You see, a judge has to be fair. A judge cannot have emotional bias when he's passing judgment. I give this example often to my students when we're discussing some of the ayat of the Qur'an about fairness. If you have a judge who's angry at women because he just went through a divorce, he's mad. And he has a court case come, a divorce case come to him, who's, is he going to be fair to that woman? No, he sees that woman, he's reminded of his ex-wife ex who sued him and he's now living in you know, a garage somewhere. So he's going to let it out on that victim. A, a judge cannot be emotionally invested, you see? And a judge cannot pass judgment on either side. If a judge passes judgment ahead of time, then he's not qualified to be a judge. So Allah Azza wa Jal removed from us the ability to judge the iman of others. He did not let us do it. So he says, وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا رَغْمَ أَنَّهُمْ اقْتَتَلُوا هَؤُلَاءْ مُؤْمِنُونَ even if they're fighting each other, you still say that they are believers. There must be some waswasa of shaitan. There must be some confusion. There must be each side thinks that they're doing the right thing. Maybe nobody sat down and talked to them. You know, inna dhalikumu shaitan. Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, talking about to, to the closest people to Allah. وَقُلِّ عِبَادِي يَقُولُ الَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنْ إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ يَنْزَخُ بَيْنَكُمْ Tell my believing slaves, that they should speak nicely to each other or say the better thing. Because shaitan, no doubt about it, will cause friction between you. That ayah came to ibad of Allah. People that are close to Allah. People that are worshipping Allah. And even they can have friction among each other. It can happen. It can occur. But we don't judge their iman. We don't pass judgment. Now these ayat are actually about actual fighting. Trying to kill one another. But you know what, if Allah gave this ayah as a solution for people that are ready to kill each other or are actually trying to kill each other, then this ayah must be a solution for any kind of fight that is less than that. If it's a lawsuit, if it's a fight between board members, if it's a fight between teachers in a school, if it's a fight between friends, if it's a fight within your family, between uncles, 
any other fight that is less than this, the ayah has a solution. Because the ayah deals with something way worse. And if this solution can work for the far worse scenario, then it can work for your situation and my situation. It can work. We have to seek the wisdom in it. Now the remarkable language, let's go back to it again. How many groups of believers are fighting? I'll make this an algebra problem from here on out. There's two groups, A, group A and group B, they're fighting. Allah says iqtatalu, instead of iqtatalata, the pair. Two groups are fighting. He said, it's like they're all, he used the plural form, not the dual form. If you say dual form, it means A is fighting with B. That's all that means. One group is fighting another group. But he didn't say iqtatalata, he said iqtatalu, al jamma. And the benefit of that is kullu fardim minhum. Kul fard minhum. Every single one of them is fighting every single one of the other. In other words, when two groups of believers, even when they're fighting, they are not two groups. They are still one ummah. They're still one ummah. You, we don't accept A and B. And all that's happening is Muslims are fighting Muslims. This ummah is fighting itself. That's what's happening. We don't even accept the labels. In the ayah, it didn't even let us legitimize the label This is group A and this is group B They're all just Muslims fighting each other That's how Allah, Allah described it SubhanAllah, look at the beauty of it Even when the believers are fighting Allah does not accept the legitimacy of them being broken up into groups Then look at us and look at the word of Allah, where we stand Then the expected word itself is taqatalu Taqatalu in Arabic means when two things happen against each other or with each other. Taqatalu means you would translate in English, fight each other. But iqtatalu bi ma'na taqatul, al iqtital bi ma'na taqatul, this word is used very strangely again. Iqtital actually means to kill yourself, to fight yourself. And so Allah is saying when two groups of believers fight, it is like they are fighting not the other but themselves. When the blood of a Muslim is spilled, it is not somebody else's blood, it is my blood. It's not separate. We are one body. When the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam describes this ummah, ka jasad, like a single body, this ayah is actually, you know, this is furthering. It's actually elaborating those beautiful words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no such thing as fighting another Muslim. The Muslim has to understand if they internalize this ayah, they are actually fighting their own selves. They are fighting themselves. You know what that means? That means I have to think about what is good for my Muslim brother, what is good for my Muslim sister, the way I think of what is good for myself. And I will never try to do to my Muslim brother or my Muslim sister what I would never do to myself. I wouldn't do it. This, this is what we're learning in this ayah. And even in the ayah about fighting, there is so much love that Muslims are taught for each other. It's incredible. وَإِن طَائِفَتَانِ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اقْتَتَلُوا Now let's move on. If that does happen, if two groups are fighting with each other, they're not learning this lesson. What's your job? What's my job? Well, our job is to sit back and have some chai and discuss, Ya, these Muslims, man, these people, they're just going to keep fighting. This fighting is never going to end. And we're just going to comment on it and complain about it and comment and complain and that's it. Allah says the command to the rest of the ummah is فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمْ أَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا Make peace between them. Sit them down. End the fighting. Don't join the fight, end the fight. Our job is to cause or create the opportunity where the two groups that can't stand each other can sit down together. If there are people in a, in a masjid, if there is a quarrel between brothers in the masjid, and happens, it's a reality, it's, it's happening all over the United States. You know, and don't come up to me and tell me about your story in Houston, I don't want to know. I don't know and I don't want to know. Just, this advice is universal. It's not based on something somebody came and told me or anything. I don't know anything. But now when it does happen, and they don't want to meet with each other, well you say, no, come to my house. I'm not fighting with you, come to my house. And invite both of those people to your house because you're neutral. That's your job. That's our job. We can't say, I don't care. See, we live in a time where we see violence in the news all the time and bad things happening all the time and we've learned not to care because there's way too much bad stuff happening. But when in the ummah, something in your social circle, somebody has an argument, a fight, Muslims are not getting along with each other, within your circle of acquaintances, you have to proactively, as a command of Allah, try to fix that situation. And when you make calls to both of them and invite them to your house, when you say, come let's just sit and talk. I don't want to fight or anything, I just want to sit and talk. When you do that, you are doing an act of ibadah. 
you are worshipping Allah when you do that. You are, you are fulfilling a command of Allah. فَأَصْلِحُ بَيْنَهُمَا Make islah, fix it. Fix it. Fix the matter between both of them. Now, again, I told you I have to present this as an algebraic problem, and I have just 10 minutes left. I'm almost done, inshallah. There's group A that was fighting with group B. The rest of us are C. And C is supposed to make peace between A and with B. So they all got together. We all shook hands. We said we're brothers. We let pre previous mistakes go. We agreed that we're not going to do this anymore. Everything's been reconciled. Everybody's, you know, happy. And they walk out of this meeting. And this meeting is not public. This meeting is not public. It's private. It's not supposed to be private. Because when Muslims fight each other, and they're, they're you know, not getting along, if you hold this meeting publicly, it demoralizes the rest of the community. Why should we bring out all of our complaints and all of our issues out in public? Do you discuss your family disagreements in public? No. People lose respect for your family. Our families have disagreements. Husband and wife can disagree. Parents and children can have arguments sometimes. But those arguments are held where? Privately. Just like a community is a large family. So when a disagreement happens, the smart thing to do, the right thing to do, is to actually make that reconcil reconciliation privately. Not embarrassing anybody publicly. Don't record it and put it on YouTube. Don't email the, you know, the, the, the meeting minutes out to the entire community or whatever. It's a private matter. What are you doing? You're embarrassing people. That's not what you're supposed to do. This is how islah is done. It's done in private. Because each side has done something wrong. Or each side has certain complaints. And you don't want to expose the faults of your brother in public. It's not the right thing to do. Anyway, privately, A, B, and C got together. Everything is resolved. Everybody hugged each other, shook hands, and they came out. And group A, they never said anything in the meeting. But when they came out of the meeting, they say, well, I don't know, that, that, I know we made peace and everything, but I'm still not happy. I don't know if that was a good decision. I don't really agree with this, you know, this peace negotiation. They didn't say that when they were in the meeting. They only said that when they came out of the meeting. And then they tell everybody else, hey, by the way, that meeting, that was a total joke. It was a sham. It wasn't even fair. They were biased against us, etc., etc., etc. You see, the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us al majalisu bil amana. Our gatherings are a trust, and they depend on trust. If you sit in a meeting and you agree to something and you finish, you shook hands on it, then you cannot complain about it anymore. The time to complain was when you were sitting behind closed doors. The time to complain is not when you come out and you start the fitna again, and you talk about what was happening inside. That's not how things work. If you didn't agree with what was happening, don't shake the hand then. Don't agree yet. You're not in agreement yet. But once you agree, you gave your word. So these people come out and they start fighting again. I want you to remember, there were three letters I gave you. A, B, and C. And C made so much effort to get everybody together, and to make the peace happen. Now when, the, when A comes out and starts fighting again, then even C gets angry. Man, I brought these people. I brought them into my house. I gave them food. I made sure that they forgive each other and move on. And they don't even respect me. I'm even neutral. And they don't even respect me. They went and started fighting again. Now Allah's commandment comes. And Allah says, فَقَاتِلُوا الَّتِي تَبْغِي Listen to this carefully, folks. If one group violates an agreement of Muslims, then everybody else has to fight them. Allah's command. فَقَاتِلُوا الَّتِي تَبْغِي Then fight the one who rebelled. Who, يعني, الْفِئَةَ الَّتِي تَجَاوَزَتْ عَنِ الْحَدْ The group that went beyond the limit. That crossed the, or dis, you know, violated the agreement. You fight, everybody has to fight against them. In other words, now A is on one side, B and C are together. It's, you're not neutral anymore. Your job is now to fight with this group. Because you made peace. Now this is the only way to end this problem. This is really ugly. This is really ugly. You know why, what we're learning? When you go into a meeting and you make peace, then make sure that it's done one time. Because if it's not done, things are going to get very ugly. Then everybody's involved in the fight. فَقَاتِلُوا الَّتِي تَبْغِي حَتَّى تَفِيئَ إِلَىٰ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ Until that group comes back to, now listen to this, Allah's command. I'll say it again. Until the rebel group, the group that started the fight up again, until they come back to Allah's command, you keep fighting them. 
You know what Allah has done here? Allah has said something amazing. When Muslims come together and shake hands and make peace, then upholding that peace is Allah's command. That agreement is called Allah's command in the Quran. It is not something that Allah Himself revealed. But when Muslims agreed with each other that they will no longer fight, then Allah's stamp is on it. It's Allah's command now. Until they come back to that peace, the original agreed peace, until then they haven't come back to Allah's command. SubhanAllah. How Allah honors the negotiations of Muslims by calling it Amrullah, the decision of Allah, the ijma of the Muslims, the reconciliation, the islah between the Muslims is the Amr of Allah. Hatta tafi'a ila Amrillah. Fa in fa'at, and this is the, the most beautiful part of all. This is the most beautiful part of all. I hope I can clarify this to you and you don't walk out of here like, I don't know what the khutbah was about, I think we learned something about the alphabet A, B, and C. I hope you actually understand what I'm trying to say. And I, I pray Allah gives me clarity so I can make this point clearly to you. So this group that started the fight over again, who has proven that they're not reliable people. They've proven that. They've proven that they can sit in a meeting and agree to your face and go outside and disagree later on. They can go back on their word. Allah says, فَإِنْ فَاءَتْ Even if they come back a second time and say, Okay, 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 we want peace again. Alright, fine. We want peace again. Then you don't turn around and say, No, we know you people. You don't want peace. We're not going to stop fighting until we crush you. Uh-uh. Even if the unreliable group comes back and says, We want peace. فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا Then you make peace between them again. You make peace between them again. In other words, you never give up on Muslims. Even if they have shown misbehavior in the past, you don't say, you don't know these people, man. We've dealt with them before. No chances for them. No. Allah says, no. You have to come back and make peace again. Subhanallah. But this time you have to be careful. See, last time it was held, I told you, I made it a point to tell you, last time when they held peace negotiations, they were behind closed doors. This time when you held, hold peace negotiations, Allah says, فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا بِالْعَدْلِ Make sure you hold, make reconciliation between them with al-adl. Al-adl in Arabic comes from adalah. And adala actually means public justice. The Arabic meaning of adala is public justice. That's why the courts are also called al-adala, because the court proceedings are open to the public. Everybody can see. Because last time it was held in private and they took advantage of that, this time the command from Allah is make peace again, but this time you have to do it in public as embarrassing as it is. It's a humiliation to the Muslim community that our arguments should be held in, our negotiations should be held in public. Everybody gets to see our dirty laundry, but there's no choice now. It has to be recorded. It has to be made public. Because th these people can't be relied on, so they don't get to say, you don't know what happened in the meeting. Actually, we do, it's recorded. It's available, the transcript is there. We all know what happened in the meeting, you understand? So this is, فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا بِالْعَدْلِ But there's another very important lesson here that I'll conclude with. The second time around, even you and I, who were neutral, even the neutral ones were commanded to fight. You remember that? The neutral ones were also commanded to fight. But when you fight, you become emotionally involved and you develop a hatred against someone you are fighting. So when you are told, stop fighting and become a judge again. When you're told to become a judge, are you still angry from the fighting? You're only human, you're gonna be angry. You're gonna be angry, and if you're angry, you're not gonna be able to be a good judge. We go back to the first problem. So Allah says this time, He didn't say that the first time, He said it this time. He said, فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَهُمَا بِالْعَدْلِ وَأَقْسِطُوا And make sure you're not unfair. Subhanallah. The second time he said, make sure you're not unfair. Because you just fought them, and you're gonna be angry. And when you're angry, you're gonna be unfair. So Allah says, watch it. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. Hold it publicly and don't be angry. Your job is still, your ultimate job is still to bring the family together. They are never your enemy. Remember when the fighting was happening, you were not fighting someone else. You were still fighting yourself. If your hand is hurting you, if your hand is hurting you, you will put medicine on it. If it's hurting you even more, you'll go for some advanced surgery or something and it's gonna be painful. But as much as this hand caused you pain, you're not gonna say, you know what? You're not gonna do it because it's a part of you. It's a part of you. 
as much as it causes you pain, it is not something separate from you. You understand? No matter how much the Muslim causes you pain, causes me pain, they are still a Muslim. They are still a Muslim. And we still have to make peace because we're still one body at the end of the day. When the Prophet says that, alayhi salatu wasalam, this body, this ummah is like a jasad, like a body. Think about what that means. Parts of our body cause us pain. They cause us pain, but we don't get rid of them just because they cause us pain. Now sometimes it's necessary. When they become cancerous, then it becomes necessary. And that's why the fighting was allowed in certain circumstances. But if the cancer goes away, what do you do? Stop the fighting and be fair. Be kind again. فَأَصْلِحُوا You know, بِالْعَدْلِوَ وَأَقْسِتُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِتِينَ Allah no doubt loves those who show justice. In my final comments, inshaAllah ta'ala, I just want to say that Allah in this ayah did not say إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْعَادِلِينَ He said إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْسِتِينَ And there's a difference between al-adl and al-qist. In English translations of the Qur'an, they're both translated as justice. Al-adl is translated as justice, al-qist is translated as justice. But al-qist means two things. Al-qist means staying away from unfairness, which is how I translated it. But it also means being fair publicly and being fair privately. Al-adl specifically refers to public. Al-qist is public and private both. At the end of the day, Allah says, if you don't want these problems to happen, then you have to learn to be fair. And you have to learn to get away from unfairness, not only in your public life, but also in your private life. And until you do that, Muslims are going to end up fighting each other. If we don't learn to become fair people, then this will be our, our plight. And if we become fair people, then the love of Allah is on us. Inna Allah yuhibbul muqsiteen. Allah didn't even just say He supports them, He's with them, He, you know, you know, he, he rewards them. He rather says in this ayah, He loves them. Subhanallah. May Allah Azza wa make us of the muqsiteen. And if we can become the muqsiteen, then we can apply the next ayah of this beautiful surah, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً That's the next ayah. Believers are brothers. Come on, what are you doing? Why are you fighting? What's wrong with you? You're brothers. That's all you are. There's nothing more to you. The only thing you should think when you look at another is ikhwa. Not even ikhwan. Ikhwan is used when you are brotherly towards someone. But a blood brother is called, a bro, blood brothers are called ikhwa. It's like Allah said, this la ilaha illallah is like thicker than blood. That's what He made us. That's the attitude we're supposed to have. So I pray that we, our hearts, Allah soften them towards each other, that He softens them towards the worship of Allah, and then Allah softens the hearts of the believers towards each other, and that Allah makes you and I uh, not, not only not part of the fight, but if we are witnesses to a quarrel and a disagreement between Muslims, that Allah make us of those who can make islah and reward us and bring the ummah together. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا